Chapter 3.1, Journalizing Transactions in a Five-Column Journal. We're going to continue on our uh, look at, at a bookkeeping. Uh, we're going to move from T accounts this chapter into what is called a journal. Some terms before we get started, though. Double entry accounting, that is basically what we will be doing, um, which means for every transaction, there will be a minimum of two entries. Sometimes there'll be more but minimum of two entries. And if you remember from last chapter with those two entries, one will be a debit and one will be a credit. Some other terms we'll talk about, we'll start learning about source documents. And that's just basically allows us to have our objective evidence for the, um, for the transaction. One of them is an invoice. That's gonna be if we buy on account, we'll receive an invoice. Once we have our transactions, we're gonna actually be placing them into a journal. Uh, we're gonna use a multi-column journal um, with some special special amount columns, which we'll get into in a little bit. Memorandum is used if basically there is no other source document to find, we just write a memorandum. A sales invoice is when we sell on account, and those would be our source documents. Take a look. We, I told you we're gonna move into the multi-column journal. As you can see here, there is a, um, we have a date, date columns, account title, doc, post reference, general sales, cash, debit, and cash credit. We use a gen, we use a we use a multi-column journal because it allows us those three right-hand columns to make it easier because these are commonly used. So we don't have to write them out, so we're only going to write one line. It'll make a little more sense as we go on. But as you can see, the first thing we have is we have our general amount columns. Just a quick thing that you want to point out to there: if we put an amount in the general amount column, we have to put a title in the account title. If we don't use the general debit or general credit column, then we don't have to use the account title. Rather, we'll put a check mark on previewing a future lesson. But again, if we use the general debit or general credit, we must put something in the account title. Next, you'll see our special amount columns. This just makes it a lot easier to record all of our transactions. So as you see our sales credit, cash debit, or cash credit. Well, what's great about these is we can actually probably rename these in our head because sales credit is gonna mean we've sold or we made a sale. Cash debit means we're gonna receive cash and cash credit means we're gonna pay cash. So basically, if you see a transaction that says received cash, you know to put it in the cash debit column. If you see that we paid cash, you know to put it in our cash credit column. And sales, if you see that we sold something or performed services or um, sold, you know, received cash for sales, that's gonna be our sales credit column. It makes it easier so we don't have to write out as many lines. So if you take a look at our source documents, there are different types. Uh, we have our check, which is up there. That's usually gonna be when we're gonna be paying cash. Our receipt is gonna be usually when um, someone pays us cash. Um, you have the invoice. Again, that's gonna be whether we sell on account or buy on account. Memorandum is when we don't have really any other source document, and we need to have a source document and calculator tape, this would be like your Z report from your cash register. As we move on, you'll learn that the source document will help you actually um, decide where it, what, what journal it'll be in and what, what you're going to be doing. So we'll get into that a little bit more as we go. So let's take a look here. Now you'll notice we have our three transactions. Um, these transactions are the exact same transactions that are in chapter two. All we're gonna do in this chapter is we're gonna take them from T accounts and we're gonna put them into the general journal. Once they're in the general journal, they are an official a journalized accounting transaction. Right now in the T account, they are not. So let's take a look at our old friend that we've seen before, received cash from owner as an investment. We know that it's cash and it's capital um, just from the previous chapter. If you don't know that, then head back to chapter two. Um, so we know that received cash, so we know that cash is going to be going up, and we know that cash is an asset, sits on the left-hand side of the accounting equation, and since it sits on the left-hand side of the accounting equation, we will increase assets and cash with a debit of $15,000. Dennis Gilbert Capital, that's an owner, uh, owner's equity account, sits on the right-hand side if the worth of the business is going up for this transaction, and since it's going up and it sits on the right-hand side, we are going to credit it. Now, all we're going to do is we're going to take these and we have to bring them into the general journal, multi-column journal below. We're using a general journal. So the first thing we do is we take the date of the transaction and we put it on there. So we put Feb 1. 
we only write Feb for the first transaction of that month or the first transaction of that page. Every other transaction, we're just going to write the date. <clears throat> Next, we're going to put our account title, which is going to be Dennis Gilbert Capital. My doc number is R1. That means receipt one. That means receipt one. And so that'll be interesting there. And then we're going to use our credits. So we put our Dennis Gilbert Capital as a credit. So that is our general column. So now if you look over here, we received cash. Well, that's going to be our cash debit column of $15,000. And that is how you trans that's how you record that transaction. So let's take a look at the next one. Paid cash for supplies, $7,000, C1. C1 being a check. So you'll oftentimes see when we receive cash, you'll oftentimes see an R1, an uh, R followed by a number. And when we pay cash, you'll see a C followed by a number. So if you take a look at here, we circle our nouns, which is cash and supplies. So we have our two accounts. They are both asset accounts. We underline the verb, which is paid, if you think we paid cash. So we know that cash will be decreasing and supplies will be increasing in this transaction. So what we'll do is, so supplies are an asset. They sit on the left-hand side of the accounting equation. The left-hand side of the accounting equation is the debit side. And at items on the left-hand side of the accounting equation that need to be increased, we increase them with a debit. So we're going to debit supplies. And now paid cash, we know that's an asset that sits on the left-hand side, but we know that cash is going down. So instead of debiting cash, we are going to credit cash. So then we take this, we move to the next transaction. Again, because it's the second transaction of the month, I do not need to write out Feb. Rather, I can just put four in there, okay? I am going to write my account title for my general debit column. In this case, it's going to be supplies. My source document will be C1. My general debit will be 7,000, and then my cash credit will be 7,000 as well. And if I did this one more time for paid cash for supplies, again, you can kind of see how we went through the same process here. I'm going to put um, the five. I do not need to write Feb because we only have to do that for the first time in write February or the top of the page. And we're going to write supplies. We're going to write C2, which is check number two, because that's what we wrote to write those checks. Their debit is $20 to supplies, and our credit is $20 to cash. Hope this helps. Best of luck, and we'll see you for the next lesson soon.